Have you ever thought about it? I mean, really. What is the purpose to life? Why are we here? Where did we come from? For that matter, where are we going to go when this life is over? Hmm. In this seminar that talks about the age of the earth, Dr. Hoven gives solid evidence to show that this earth is not billions of years old. In fact, the evidence points towards a literal six-day creation, like told about in Genesis chapter 1. Hi, my name is Aaron, and we hope you enjoy this incredibly powerful seminar presented by Dr. Hoven. It's called The Age of the Earth. here in Southern California tonight. How many have been to one of my seminars before or seen a videotape? How many never have? Okay, and how many do not understand the question so far? <laughs> Good guy. My name is Ken Hovind. I taught high school science for 15 years. And now I travel and do seminars on creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. And I let people know what I believe before I get started. I believe the Bible is the infallible, inspired, inerrant word of the living God. I believe it from cover to cover. <clears throat> Amen. And I believe the evolution theory that's being taught in our schools is one of the dumbest and most dangerous religions in the history of humanity. <laughs> and those are the nice things to say about it. Okay. So, uh, one of my jobs as a Christian, and your job if you're a Christian, is to be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh the reason of the hope that's in us. And I think in the last 200 years, the Christians have not done a good job of answering the skeptics. And we've allowed them to take over our school system and our legal process, and our whole thinking process is now based on this theory called evolution. Folks, there's a war going on, and there are three things I try to accomplish in my seminar. Number one, I want to strengthen your faith in the Word of God. Number two, if you're not saved, I'm going to try to get you converted tonight. Okay? I told you right up front, I'm after you. All right? <laughs> Number three, if you're saved and you're not doing much for the Lord, then I'm going to try to make you uncomfortable. Fair enough? I need to warn you, just about every sin in the book is mentioned in my seminar series. It's likely that everybody's toes will be stepped on at least once. We recommend steel-toed shoes or a willingness to move your feet. <laughs> you will need one or the other. Okay, this, this is not my wife. That's just a picture of her. We live in Pensacola, Florida. Been there for 15 years. Have three kids, one of each. My kids are 24, 25, and 26, a year and two weeks apart. It's called family planning where I come from. And let's see, my daughter Marlissa is here tonight. Where'd she go? Marlissa? She's out there somewhere. They got the stuff at the airport. I saw them here. And uh, anyway, I got them all married off, brother, and the dog died, so I made it. I'm home free. It's wonderful. And all six of them work for me in my ministry, and now I've got two grandkids, and hopefully a thousand more coming. Grandkids are God's reward for not killing your own kids when you thought about it. <laughs> we, uh, at our ministry, produce a lot of videotapes. We've made over a million videos now in six languages. They're not copyrighted. We encourage you to get our stuff and spread it around. It's copied all you want. We put out a lot of materials, and we want to see people get saved. We have quite an interesting ministry. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. They're in creation science evangelism. Uh, we have about 40 people on staff now, a little over 40, and we are trying to stir up trouble for the entire planet. Okay. Now, we do this because we want to change people's worldview. A worldview is the way you view the world, obviously. Now, there are two ways to view this world. Some people look at the world and say, you know, it's amazing that this came from evolution. Other people say it came from a creator. Now, the way you answer the four great questions in life is determined by how you view the world. The four fundamental questions of life, who am I, where did I come from, why am I here, and where am I going when I die, those four questions are answered very differently depending on how you view the world. Some people look at the world and say, it's amazing, a big bang made this from nothing. That's the humanist worldview based on evolution. Other people look at the world and say, you know, there's a credible design, there must be a designer, and that's called the creationist worldview. And those two worldviews are polar opposite, I mean, somebody's wrong, okay? And they are at war with each other. <clears throat> and I enjoy showing them who's wrong. So that's what I do. I go around and do a lot of debates at universities. I've had 87 now, debates at universities. I've had three in the last uh, two weeks. Can't find any more opponents, though. So if you believe in evolution, you want to debate on the topic, call me. I'll be glad to come do it. Okay? 
Now, if the evolution theory is true, how would you answer the four fundamental questions of life? Who am I and what am I worth? Well, if evolution is true, you are nothing important. You're just a bit of protoplasm that washed up on the beach. You're not worth a thing. Actually, you're part of the problem because you're one of the polluters of the environment. And the more of you we can get rid of, the better. Where did I come from? Now, if evolution is true, we came from a cosmic burp about 20 billion years ago. Why am I here? What's the purpose of life? Well, if evolution is true, there is no purpose, so you might as well have fun. If it feels good, do it. Where am I going when I die? Well, if evolution is true, we're going to the grave and we're going to get recycled into a worm or a plant. But see, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, if that's true, that puts a whole different set of answers to those questions. That means we better try to figure out who God is and find out what He wants and do what He says. Because He owns this place, folks. He makes the rules. It belongs to Him. But the devil doesn't like that. The devil came to Eve in the Garden of Eden. He said to the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Question mark. The first sentence out of the devil's mouth was a question to make Eve doubt God's word. And he's still doing the same thing today. He wants you to doubt God's word. I think that's one of the reasons why there's so much confusion about all the different Bible versions. Oh, where is God's word? Same old trick from the devil. Second thing he said to the woman, he said, ye shall not surely die. Now he's denying God's word, and he does that still today. But the third thing he said is what I want to talk to you about tonight. He said, Eve, if you eat off that tree, ye shall be as gods. And right there is where the whole idea of evolution got started. It didn't start with Charlie Darwin. It started with Satan in the Garden of Eden. He wants you to think you can become a god. Yes, boys and girls, we started off like an amoeba, and we're evolving. We're getting bigger and better and stronger and smarter, and someday we're going to sail around the universe and discover new life forms like Star Trek. People ask me all the time, they say, Hoven, do you think there's intelligent life on other planets? I say, no. I taught high school 15 years. There's not much intelligent life on this planet. <laughs> Satan's a liar. He said, you can be like God. Well, I tell you what, the Mormon church has swallowed that one, haven't they? They teach their people, if you're a good Mormon, you get to be God someday. And if you're a good Mormon wife, when you go to heaven, you get to be eternally pregnant, producing spirit babies. My wife don't want to go. <laughs> she said, that's not heaven, honey. <laughs> By the way, there are some great books to reach Mormons, and they need the gospel just like everybody else. There's a good website, UTLM, for utahlighthousemission.org, if you have everything you want to know about Mormons. I was surprised to find out a couple years ago, some of the major Catholic theologians of the past have taught man can become God. Now, most Catholics don't believe that. They don't even know some of their leaders have taught that. The idea that man can be God came from the devil in the Garden of Eden. He's the one who wants to be God. Lucifer said, I will ascend into heaven. <clears throat> I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. See, the devil wants to be God. But the job is not available. So <clears throat> he's all upset about that, and he can't be God. So he's mad at God, but he can't do anything to God, so he's mad at us, because we are made in God's image. Did you ever wonder why the devil hates you so bad? It's because you remind him of God. So he lied to Eve and told her she could be like God. Now Hitler said, if you tell a lie long enough and loud enough and often enough, the people will believe it. He said they're more likely to believe a big lie than a small one. Now, if you want to get somebody to believe a lie, you have to do it like my two big brothers did with me. I have two older brothers. They've always been older than I am. <clears throat> but when I was about six years old, I was raised in East Peoria, Illinois, and I came running in for breakfast one morning, and I was the first one there for breakfast. And I got the last banana out of the bowl to put on my cereal. Well, a few minutes later, my two big brothers came in, and they said, hey, Kent, is that the last banana? I said, yep, and I got it. How many of you have an older brother or sister? You know that wonderful feeling you get when you finally pull one over on them? They pick on you all the time. Boy, that morning I had them and I knew it. They wanted my banana. 